Broadcasting live from Twist in Warwick, out on Route 2, and we welcome you to the Keno Davis Radio Show on Sports Radio 103.7 WEI-FM. I'm John Rook with the head coach of the Friars, Keno Davis. We're glad that you could be out here with us, Friar fans, and if you're in the neighborhood, if you're thinking about coming down, we'll make sure you uh, hit Twist here from 7 to 8 p.m. tonight. Uh, located 336 Bald Hill Road in Warwick. You have a chance to win some tickets when the Friars host Rutgers this Saturday night. So that's what we're giving away. Coach, um, since the last time uh, we had a chance to speak, uh, at least here in your coach's show, obviously there's been a lot of play, but we'll kind of deal more with, I think, the present tense in terms of uh, what's happened in the Big East. Uh, you open up out on the road with Notre Dame, uh, and then uh, you go out and stay out on the road for game two uh, with St. John's and finally come back home last night. Uh, for a game with Louisville that, quite frankly, was a little strange. And I don't know if it's if you've been able to digest it a little bit better or a little bit more or whatever from last night, but there really were some good spots in it. And it, then there were some really ugly spots in it. And so I'm wondering how you kind of balance the two and where you go from here in terms of last night's game. You know, well, I've really been proud uh, of our young team to come after that first half at Notre Dame uh, to be able to have a good second half, come into the St. John's game, play a, a full game there and then come back and, you know, for the most part in that Louisville game, that first half, other than the first four minutes, which uh, were kind of a mystery, yeah. uh, really played uh, very intense and uh, very energetic. And then that second half, uh, I think you hit it on the head. It, it, it mystifies me to what happened. You know, it was like we, we were doing okay. All of a sudden there was a delay uh, looking at the shot clock and we just weren't ourselves the rest of the game. And I think uh, what, what I have to chalk that up to is a young team, inexperienced team that wasn't able, even a small thing like that or a run to start the game, we didn't uh, handle it as well as a more veteran team would. And so what we do is we, we learn from it and don't let it happen again. Well, uh, anytime a team of Louisville's caliber is going to come at you, and obviously they've got senior guards that kind of lead the way, and they've got one of the more talented big men, not only in the Big East, maybe even in the country, and Samardo Samuels, you knew you were going to have you know, some serious loads to have to handle. But when you get down to a team like that 14 nothing out of the gate like you did last night, what do you say? What do you do? Is there any magic elixir? What did you guys talk about during the timeout in an effort to get these kids to say, all right, forget the scoreboard, let's just go out and play? Well, I'm sure different coaches would have different answers to that, but uh, what I was talking about was I was talking about our defense. I was talking about getting back, or talking about our rebounding, and focusing on the energy plays and trying to, to keep the thought of not having scored out of their minds where they start thinking, God, we haven't made a bucket. And, and I knew once we were able to make a shot, you know, then we'd get our pressure up and our, our three-quarter court press. It's amazing to me about how good it's gotten with such a young team. We, we win that game at St. John's solely on our three-quarter court press. And against Louisville, I'm not so sure our press wasn't better than theirs. And that's a team that's known for, you know, they're a number one seed in the entire tournament last year with a lot of experience back. And yet we've learned how to play a three-quarter court press. We haven't learned a full court. We haven't learned the half-court defense quite yet. But I think to be right. able to have a staple of being able to create off your defense uh, at this early point in the year is really a positive sign. Well, down 14 nothing, as I suggested, really a bizarre turnaround, but your guys are to be credited. Joe and I talked about this postgame last night, and I've been thinking a lot about it today. In that first four and a half minutes that it took you to score to the last half minute of the half, you outscored Louisville 42 to 20. Well, I think you're going to see and continue to see from this team signs of a really good team down the future. You're going to see flashes from Vincent Council or Duke Monday or James Still or Johnny Lacey. You're going to see some of the young guys. You know, you even you think of our, our starting center and power forward, uh, you know, Belial Dixon, Jermaine Peterson. That's just a freshman and a sophomore out there. So you're going to see stretches where we play great. And we just we look like we got everything going. And then you're going to see other stretches where you're going to shake your head and it's just going to frustrate you. But that's what a young team is about. Did you feel like Louisville was going to do what they did in the second half, that they were going to pound the ball inside to Samuels and then hopefully if you guys collapsed on him, they were going to kick it out. And that's probably what the game was going to boil down to, their ability to hit some of those outside shots? Well, I knew they were going to go inside because they had taken of their 29 shots in the first half. They had taken 20 of them as threes. Right. Um, I was really surprised they took the press off that they didn't feel like they could press us, and I think that's a credit to Vincent Council. Uh, you know, when he was at the point, he'd just go through their press, and we were able to score and create going to the basket. What they did is they got it into a half-court game. We weren't able to make shots to get our press up, and it got to a half-court kind of rock fight, and, right. and they're 
definitely bigger and stronger and, and better than us in a half-court game. Uh, and we weren't able to control the tempo. And we don't, when we don't make shots with this team, uh, we're going to struggle. And we understand that. We just have to improve each and every day. Yeah, you actually outscored them fast break-wise 17-10 to 10 last night. Let me say this about your press, though. Even though it's not the, you know, in-your-face, um, you know, uh, frenetic type of press that Louisville obviously has run in the past, the 2 2 1 press that you run is more of a nuisance press. It does seem to work pretty well. You were able to create turnovers off of that against St. John's in the road win on Sunday, and uh, obviously it caused Louisville a little bit of a problem as well. So, when do you know when to slap it on and when to take it off? Well, I think as we get better in it, and it might not happen this year, but what our fans can see from our press, you just take our three quarter court press alone. We are, we'd have the ability to use that as to slow the game down to speed it up, to trap often and make really aggressive, trap off of non-shooters, hold on shooters not to give up buckets. Okay. And as you learn the press and, and understand that, now you take the three-quarter court press and every once in a while you give them the full court press and they're in a different alignment. It really just takes teams out of what they want to do in a half court. Now we need the players to be able to run it and we need to, uh, to have more practice with it to be able to get there. But you're just going to see our full court game continue to improve this year and in years to come. But you can do a lot of different things out of it, as you suggested. Uh, you can kind of, it's almost like an option press, where it's like if you want to go to the corners and get out on their shooters or trap when the ball gets over mid-floor, you can do that. If you want to guard the ball coming in bounds and you want to try to trap in the backcourt if you really need to speed things up, it all emanates from your 2-2-1. It, it really does. And, and what you're able to do is you go into a game you go into Louisville, you got three days to prepare. You go to UConn, you got two days to prepare. And you say, okay, then this is what we're going to do for this game. Here's our game plan just out of this press. And now you've got your full court press. Now you've got your half court defense, your man defense, your zone defense. Right now we're very one dimensional in everything. Whether it's our drop back defense or our full court, we're just trying to get good at one point at one part of it. And as we do, as we improve and we're able to put different pieces together, uh, now we're talking about you know, a team that can really compete nationally. You add some pieces to that as far as personnel, I think the future is really bright and I'm excited. And so I get frustrated like everybody else when you lose a game. But in the whole picture of things, uh, we're really moving forward quite quickly. I do want to talk, at least tonight, a little about that future, uh, at least some of the young men that you have signed to National Letters of Intent, simply because uh, one or two of them are having unbelievable uh, last years in their high school slash prep years. So we'll get into that a little bit later. But I want to also uh, spend some time on the St. John's game on Sunday, simply because it was a road win. It's your first Big East win of the year. For a lot of these kids, it's their first experience. Not only is their first Big East win, it's their first real successful experience experience on the road now you won two games in the non-conference away games which is great but winning in the Big East is certainly I think a step above winning something else on the road in non-league play so I'm wondering what you felt like maybe some of your younger guys on this team got out of the gritty effort that you had in particular in that second half against St. John's you're down by four points with seven and a half minutes to go and you end up winning that game by 15. Yeah I mean I, I, I kind of scratched my head as well you know to think about winning there um, and not shooting well and not even shooting well to the last minute. Uh, but what we were able to do, I think, with such a young team is we were focusing on the energy, on the defense, and knowing that I, I really had confidence that down the stretch we had played a, a, a deeper bench, more players, and that if we could get to the last 5-10 minutes at Notre Dame and the last 5-10 minutes at St. John's, we have a deeper team and a better team when you go to 7-8, 9, 10, 11 players deep. Now at Notre Dame, we didn't get to the last 10 minutes right. with a chance to win. Uh, we did at St. John's, and, and that's kind of what I think we're going to be looking at the rest of the year uh, is on the road, can you go down the last four, five minutes with a chance? And if we do, I think we're going to have the fresh legs uh, to be able to compete. 